Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5pm Pacific Time in the United States, which is 10am in Australia or 1am if you're in the UK. Uh, remember though, if you miss the live streams, you can catch up with the premiere event streams on a Friday and Saturday at 2pm Pacific Time in the US, which is 7am in Australia or 10pm in the UK, I believe. I hope all you guys and girls are well. It's good to be back. I had that week's break, but it's never long enough, is it? And I couldn't sleep in. Tell me, what, what is up with that? I did my best, but I still get up at 6.30 in the morning. Oh, man. I hope all you guys and girls had a good Easter, though. And didn't eat too much chocolate. Um, I, I restrained myself. I had some chocolate cake, but uh, no pimples yet. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I hope you, you guys and girls, your Easter was good. You enjoyed it all. Uh, do remember, guys, if you've got any questions while I'm working, please feel free to pop into chat and ask me. If I can help you in any way, I'm happy to try. Uh, if you just want to pop in and say hi, that's always welcome. But if all you want to do is watch, that's completely fine. I get that. Okay, so my mic's unmuted. That's good. Everything looks fine. Uh, we're going to continue working on the house in the hollow, which is... Uh, sorry, not the house in the hollow. <laughs> the house in the hollow was a cinematic I did using UE4. Uh, I, the reason I've got that on the brain is because I've been doing some work, uh, some background stuff for that over the last few days. Uh, we're going to continue working on the Temple of the Winds, uh, which we're creating in 3D Studio Max, and we are texturing up in Substance Painter. Um, so we're going to continue doing that, and then once I've done the initial texturing in Substance Painter, I'm going to take a couple of those assets into Mari by the Foundry, just to do a bit of an overpaint on, to make them a little bit more unique. That's the plan. All right, so uh, let us jump into Max. So this is the temple we're working on. We got up to doing some design work on the um, decorative iron work that goes around one of the columns here. Now, I think I might want to make a couple of changes, just a couple of uh, additions to these column pieces, I think. Yeah, let's jump into Substance Painter and have a look at the columns. I just want to make a couple of small adjustments, I think. I am using the new version of Substance Painter, the 2019 version that Subst that Algorithmic released, I think, last week. Let's just wait for Painter to load up all of my materials there. Come on, you can do it. Excuse me for two seconds, my phone is going, oh guys, I'm just going to check. No, that's all good. Oh, all right. So, uh, let us load up the column file, which will be... Uh, let's start with column one because there's two versions of the file. It's just telling me it was created in an older version. That's fine. Uh, there's two versions of two textures for each for the columns, and we're alternating them just so people don't notice we're reusing the same texture over and over again. Uh, now there are a couple of things I might want to change here. When I originally created the column, Smurfberry Barbecue, it's good to see you, buddy. How are you? Did you have a good Easter? I hope you're well. I hope your Easter was good. I hope you didn't eat too much chocolate. I was just saying before that I, um, I caved in and ate a little bit of chocolate cake. You just got back from Endgame. What's Endgame? What is Endgame, Smurfberry? 
Is that? Oh, you're talking about the new um, Avengers movie, aren't you? How was it? Did you enjoy it? Was it good? I haven't seen it yet. Yep. Was it, Did you like it? What's your opinion? Did they give us a happy ending? It's okay. You can give me spoilers. I don't mind. Uh, it was good. Solid conclusion to the arc. Okay. Did they bring any of them back? Like, you know how in the first part one they killed off half of them by turning them to dust? Did any of them get brought back? I haven't actually read up on it, but I did read that uh, it had been released. Maybe, maybe you shouldn't say in case somebody pops in and uh, doesn't want to know. Because <laughs> my theory was that they'd bring them back, but they may not if they're finishing the series. Uh, Smokery says, I can't believe you're asking for spoilers. <laughs> Uh, I know. Yes, I deserve the mod slap. Yes, yes. We don't. We don't ask for spoilers. Twitch streamers don't like spoilers generally, but I'm not like most Twitch streamers. So. <laughs> but anyone that pops into chat might not want to know, so don't say. But I do want to say it. Uh, Smokery says all they say is that the ending isn't a downer like the previous movie. Okay. All right, so long as it's not a downer like the previous movie, then that's all good. Uh, I, I was intending to see it anyway, because I like part one. I thought part one was good. The effects were nicely done. Um, I'll be glad to see no more of those superhero movies, I have to say. Because, yeah, there have been so many of them for so long. I'm sure that they've got a whole new crop of superheroes that they can start churning movie at, movies out for, though. Sorry if I'm a little distracted here. So I'm glad the ending isn't a downer though. That's the important thing. Although I have heard stories of people that went to see part two, Endgame, crying as well in the cinema. Now I don't know what... If, if a movie moves you, there's no reason not to cry. That's all fine. You can cry. It's cool. Um, some people were making fun of them, though, saying, well, you know, they're crying, <laughs> they're crying over imaginary superheroes. <laughs> uh, Smoker says, no more Spider-Man 2, Black Panther, no, <laughs> Spider-Man 2, Black Panther 2, The Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which I'm really looking forward to, uh, already in production and pre-production. You think they're just going to let the cash cow uh, leave? No, I'm, I'm sure they won't. Isn't, the, isn't Star Wars, isn't this supposed to be the last Star Wars as well in the trilogy of, of from Disney Studios? Or am I wrong? I'm, I'd be surprised if they let that one die as well. Because they're already putting those stories in between the main trilogy, the, the movie stories like Han Solo and all that sort of thing. Uh, Smokery says, yeah, episode 9 is the last in the current Star Wars story. You think they're going to let that die? That's a major cash cow for, for Disney. I'd be incredibly surprised if they didn't continue doing something with uh, that Star Wars universe. Mercury says, but they'll probably still have those Star Wars side movies. Yeah, they'll start something new. Who knows? I'm sure they will. I'm sure they'll do something. Disney makes huge amounts of money off Star Wars. Everybody goes to see it. Which is cool, they're good movies, they're, they're fun. Nicely done. I know some people don't like Disney taking over and remake and making new episodes of Star Wars, uh, new movies of Star, in the Star Wars universe, but I think they've done a good job. People are always going to bitch about something. Because that's what people do. <laughs> Uh, yes, we're never gonna never gonna be be rid of Star Wars or superhero maybe probably. The only crit criticism of like these superhero Hollywood movies is they take audiences away from more independent films. That uh, people have argued about this for a while. Um, that people get sucked. Well, everybody is drawn to the major Hollywood budget superhero film, which uh, means that the independent films don't get. As much attention as they deserve. So, 
Android Lust, it's good to see you, Android Lust. Uh, it says, did I just walk into a movie? No, you didn't. You didn't. I, I was actually going to ask Mercury to, to give me a spoiler, but then I changed my mind because, yeah, it's not good for you guys that haven't seen the movie. <laughs> and he gave me a slap for it, so that's okay. Uh, no spoilers, that's right. Android Lust is good. Uh, Smokery says, I will end anyone who posts spoilers. Well, Smokery is a barbecue, so be... Uh, <laughs> Smokery is a moderator. <laughs> So he has that power, be warned. No spoilers for the movie. It's good to see you, Android. Last did you have a good Easter? Yeah, no, he'll he will. He'll ban me. Smokeberry will ban me. Ban me from my own channel. How about that? Uh now I'm just trying to decide what I want to do at the top and bottom of this column. You know, I, let's jump back into Max and look at the model. This is a temple, and I think it needs more bling. So we're going to introduce more gold into it, I think. Don't do that. Don't do that. There we go. Um, Android Lost says, past week wasn't too bad. Too bad. <laughs> too, too bad. Too bad. Good to hear. Good to hear. Actually, the um, not to be a downer on stream, but the, the thing that happened in Sri Lanka was quite bad on over Easter. Those church bombings. What is wrong with the world? Can't everybody just get along and love each other? I mean, come on. Don't go blowing everybody up and shooting everybody. Just, you know, take a chill pill and learn to love everyone, guys. I'm not talking to you guys. You guys love everyone. Uh, Android Lust says, what? I didn't hear about a church. What you there in Sri Lanka, there was like uh, three or four churches that were bombed and hundreds of people that were killed and hundreds more that were injured. It was terrible. Uh, they, they, they bombed um, not Muslim church uh, synagogue, Muslim temples, but, but churches. Catholic churches, I think they were. So, uh, yeah, that, that happened in Sri Lanka. It was very bad. And... Um, yeah, a lot of people died, a lot of people in mourning at the moment over there. It's not a good thing. <laughs> you get out from under your rock? Look, I understand if people don't want to follow that sort of thing, because it's upsetting. You don't want to hear about the hundreds of people being killed. That's not nice. So it's, it's you know, it, it's understandable if you don't, if you want to avoid that type of news. Um... I watch a lot of news channels though, so I'm inundated with it because it's been blanketed all over the news here. And that happened over Easter, which is which is even worse because you know, even if I'm not religious, so I, I I don't consider Easter the religious thing. A lot of people do, or some people do. Um, but regardless of that, it's just it's terrible at any time for people to be killed, so needlessly, pointlessly killed over religion, I guess. Yeah, it's, it was terrible because it was over Easter Android Lost. Anyway. Um, yes, yeah, so this is our temple here of the winds. No, no religion. There is no religion associated to my temple here. It can be any religion you want to think it, <laughs> it is. Um, but I think it needs more bling, more gold. You never have too much gold. That's what I say. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to put more gold in. Uh, now, starting with the columns, I think. Um, I'll, I'm going to put gold up here as well, but we'll get to those in a minute. But let's start with the columns, because there's a couple of things I want to do on the column. I want to, like I said, change up the uh, the pattern, the, the distressing of the column a little bit. And also, I think I want to change the top and the bottom of the column here. Uh, Smoker says, Temple of the Wind, Temple of Fire, fills the Pagan. <laughs> I have no religion. I don't don't follow any religion. My religion is just to treat everyone everyone with respect and dignity, and that, that you know that's as far as I go as far as religion goes. I just believe you can think what you want to think. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. I wouldn't call myself a pagan. I wouldn't call myself a Christian. I wouldn't call myself a Muslim. I wouldn't call myself anything. I just treat people like I want to be treated. I don't need religion to try and teach to, to teach me how I should treat other people, which is really all religion is for. 
It's just to make sure we treat each other properly and we don't, you know, go out murdering each other. Uh, Andrew Lust says, I'm not religious at all, but I don't condone church bombings even if I don't agree with them. I am the same. I don't condone anyone killing anyone else. I, I don't even like it in war. I, I'm, I'm, you know, a pacifist in that regard. I don't believe in killing other human beings, even in war. Uh, so yeah, I agree with you, Android Lust, one hundred percent. It's never cool. It's never good. And these people are—I don't know. Just I don't know. But whether you're a white supremacist killing Muslims or whether you're a Muslim killing the rest of us, um, <laughs> it's not good. It, and it's just terrible. Anyway, let's get off the religion topic. I think. I think we don't want to give oxygen to these terrible people. So how am I going to handle this? Um, if I want to jump, what I might do is I might, did I create a smart material for this? I can't remember. Why are we can, I can't remember. I don't know. It doesn't look like I did because I, I haven't got a folder. I don't think set up here. So let's create a smart material for this because I'm going to have to re-export the column uh, because I want to separate the top and the bottom. So I can add a, a separate texture here. So first things first, we're going to create a smart material. Android Doss says, I don't think you made a smart, no, I didn't. I can see I didn't here. Because to make a smart material, you have to start with creating a folder. Uh, let's rename the folder. You see, I think I just have to double click it. That's the easiest way. Uh, we're going to call this one my, because I always start my my smart materials with my, so when I know it's my material. Uh, my column one. Is this column one? Yes, my column one. Uh, now we have to drag these into the folder. And then we right click the folder and we say create smart material. How hard is that? Uh, okay. Let's just wait for those to propagate before I jump out of the program. Uh, now, you remember last week, Smurfberry, you wanted, you asked me uh, about the... Salt Shaker Live says, Hey, I'm curious. I have a game I've been working on for a couple of months now. Just trying to grab some reactions of people. You are a sub, so you have been given permission to post links. Well, there you go. If you want to check out, check out Salt Shaker Live's game that they're creating, which is very cool. What are you using, by the way? What engine are you using to create your game, Salt Shaker Live? Unity 2018. Uh, why can't you see the links, Android Lust? That's interesting. Uh, hang on, um, I don't think you... Okay, it, now, <laughs> you can't both post links in my Twitch channel, Salt Shaker Live, unless you are a sub to my channel, I'm afraid. You can post links on the Discord server, and I'm happy for you to post a link to your game there if you'd like. Notebot removed it, yeah. That's because, yeah, only subs can post links in Twitch chat. That's a that's a perk that subscribers have on my channel, but everyone can post links on the Discord server. So uh, Nightbot there has just popped a link to my Discord for me. I'm, that, I'm freaked out by that, I'm telling you. That, that night, it listens to me, it must be. Uh, so uh, click that link if you want to join the Phil Dust Ready Discord server and you can post your link in there and everyone can check it out from there. Um, so I'll check a live. There's some, actually, I should, I forgot about Discord. There's a couple of images posted I want to show everyone that uh, some of the users on the site have posted on, on my Discord. Uh, it, it's a good group of guys and girls on Discord. There's a section there where you can post links to your art station or your portfolio. Uh, there's a channel where you can look at tutorials and tips that the users have posted over their time on the server. Oh, Android Lust posted the Discord. Yeah, how stupid am I? <laughs> Here I am thinking Nightbot is spying on me. Did I miss the comment by Android Lust posting the Discord link? <laughs> a 
the. <laughs> Um, I might check it out though in two secs here on the stream. Salt Shaker Live, if you like. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll check it out in two minutes. I will show it on stream. Yeah, so you're, you're cool for me to show it on stream, and it is family friendly, isn't it? Salt Shaker Live. We're not going to see titties and things in this video of yours, are we? You tell me before I open that link, because uh, I like to keep it family friendly. <laughs> Uh, remember too that all of my videos get posted up to my YouTube channel or my Twitch streams. No, no, no titties. Okay. Okay. If there's no titties, then we'll have a look. Actually, no, because you put the exclamation discord Android last, that's why Nightbot posted the link. I was, I, I, I'm getting paranoid for no reason. Take my tinfoil hat off there. Now uh, that was the reason that Nightbot posted the link because you did the uh, exclamation discord command. <laughs> And Salt Shaker Live, it's, uh, it's PG. Okay. All right. Well, let's have a look. I can see the link here in my chat. No one else can, but um, I can. And that's all that matters. No, that's not true. Just let me grab the link. And let me open my browser. Uh, again, anyone that doesn't know me or who I am, you can go to phildoes 3 dcom and you can read up about me there. You can look at my gallery. There's links to my art station, my YouTube channel, all that stuff. Let's have a look at Salt Shaker Live's game uh, that they're creating in Unity. I'm um, just, do we have audio with this? I might mute it otherwise. Lucky Balls, Unity Game Dev Update, Physics-based local brawler. Okay. Cool. Let me just full screen this. Well, that looks interesting. Oh, I see what's going on here. Okay, I was just a bit confused. I, I didn't realize this was like, um, like a labyrinth grid thing. I can see that now. So is the objective to try and get to the center? <laughs> oh dear. I guess that's family friendly. <laughs> uh, Smokery says, kind of looks like it needs an aim vector. For where you're going to go when you do that charge and jump move. ICMZ, it's good to see you ICMZ. Uh, I'm not going to play that. I'll replay this video again. I hope you had a good Easter ICMZ and Sniper Girl, it's good to see you as well. We're just looking at a game that um, Salt Shaker Live is making in Unity. This is a dev, dev build that we're looking at. Sniper Girl says, what are we watching? Well, there you go. And it's good to see you, Sniper Girl and ICMZ. I hope you guys and girls had a good Easter. Didn't eat too much chocolate. I've been saying that to everyone. I said that to you guys before I went on break, I'm saying it again, because it's bad for you eating too much chocolate anyway. Um, but ICMZ, yeah, you should um, post the link in the Discord general chat. Uh, and you should also post links under the, um, where are we? <laughs> the Folios Demo Reels uh, chat channel on the Discord server. You can post links to your art station or to your website, or any, anything to promote your game if you'd like. This looks very cool for an early dev build. Uh, my only cr criticism initially, like I said, was I didn't realize, you, you know, where you've got the black part here for the, um, for the maze. I, I didn't realize it was a maze, but it is a dev build. So you, you may be planning to do something with the graphics here for the maze. Android Lust says to ICMZ and Sniper Girl. Okay. Sniper Girl says Reproduction Simulator. Salt Shaker Live says that's a good idea. Uh, I aim to an aim curve to where you might go. Yeah, that's, that was Smurfberry's suggestion. I think it's a good one. 
Android Lust says to Salt Sake Alive. Uh, did one of the characters have a sombrero on? <laughs> this one looks like it's wearing like a fez or. It's very cute though, very cool. I like it. I like anything quirky, it's certainly quirky. Uh, Unity is a good engine. I've been using UE4. I love UE4. <laughs> Epic Games, you know I love you. I do love UE4. Um, I've used it for many, 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 many years. But Unity is also a very good, uh, very good game engine. And not just the game engine. I was reading your guys' comments. Um, Snoop, uh, all these S's, Snoopy Girl, about uh, a program that was written in Unity. Uh, you, you guys were talking about programs with Edo, I think. Um, and you were mentioning that one of the uh, one of the program programs was actually created in Unity, which is so. This program is not a game at all. It's like a, so. I thought that was really interesting. Uh, Salt Shaker Live, thanks for the female. Uh, yeah, they have a Salt Shaker Live says yeah they have a bunch of different skins that you will be able to pick from. Well, that's even more cool. That's a great idea. Stop this. Stop auto playing the next video. It looks really cool. I, I, I look forward to seeing it when you've developed it up a bit more, Salt Shaker Live. I love to see works in progress as well as finished works. I don't think that if you, you're only at like um, an early stage in whatever you're making, you can't show it. I'm happy to show it as well and look at it because I love looking at all the stuff you guys are making. Oh, look, there's that Australian man. There's Thor. Avenger. Oh, they're talking about Avengers Endgame. Okay. Andrew Lost says it's, a Brit uh, it's the British soldier hat thing. That's it. That's right. It is not a fez. A fez is flat on top, isn't it? Uh, Smurfery says one of the levels should be a black hole in the center and you shoot a planet into it instead of uh, an egg and sperm, respectively. <laughs> Andrew uh, Smurfery says like a uh, Wario War sort of grab bag of party games. Sniper Girl says to, to me, yeah, uh, the Terrain Edit program, honestly, I'm giving it a try and want to learn learn it. Think of doing an outdoor scene would be cool. I'm all for you guys doing anything outdoor and environment because that's, that's my specialty. I do environment art, as you guys know, um, and technical. I'm a technical artist and environment artist. Not so much the technical in my current position. Oh, that's not true. They're, they're, you know, no, there's still technical things I have to do. Um, Snuffy Girl says, after the van and the gas station. Uh, speaking of end game, have you guys seen it? Well, Smurfberry Barbecue's seen it. He gave me a pill slap for wanting spoilers as well. <laughs> there are no spoilers. It's amazing. Yeah, I, I plan on going and seeing it because I like part one, so I'm sure part two will be really cool as well. Uh, Smurfery says, I need a good hype map for my Unreal Scenes terrain. I should try that out, maybe? Yeah, well, again, I, I used Eon View to do the hype map for my terrain for the uh, House on the Hollow. But that program that you guys were talking about on the Discord server chat looks cool as well. Salt Shaker Live says to Smurfery, hmm, reskin the game for a future DLC. I'll keep you. I think reskin it, yeah. But something to keep in mind. For DLC particularly, because that seems to be the way games are going now. Uh, Smurfery says, black holes are so hot right now. They are, because they've just photographed that one in the center of that distant galaxy, didn't they? An actual photograph of a black hole. Something they thought they'd never be able to photograph. And it looks looks just like the movie. It's amazing. Smurfery says, no fake spoilers either. Uh, <laughs> Smurfery Girl says, well, considering there's a, another Spider-Man coming out, uh, he's the only character safe. Smurfery says, I wonder if I can ban Sniper Girl. <laughs> you're both mods. Be careful, you'll end up banning each other and you won't be able to do anything. And then I'll have to take over moderation of the chat and that's not what I want to do. I think um, I remember Sniper Echo saying he couldn't ban himself, so that's good. <laughs> so I don't think mods can ban mods. I think only I can ban you guys, if you're a mod. I think. Um, 
uh, that's right. I wanted to just check out while we're doing, uh, watching, looking at other people's work. There's uh, a, an image in here that um, was posted, which looked really cool. I think it was by, 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 there's two actually. By uh, ICMZ, it's yours. It's that sci-fi corridor. I wanted to look at this because it looks really cool. I do remember you showing it um, at the end of last year. So we're going to show it here now that you've um, done the final renders. So let me just scale this up so we can get a good look on stream. And scale this one up as well. Now the reason I have to scale up is because I'm using a 4K monitor, so I don't think it's any problem with your images, it's just my screen. Res. That looks super cool. Super, super cool. And I believe, did you say you rendered, did these renders in Marmoset? Rendered in Marmoset, yep. Marmoset toolbag. Very nice, very cool. Really nice work. I, I, I like the sort of the atmosphere, the feel of it. It's got like a, this image has a really dark brooding sort of feel, um, which is really hard sometimes to, to do with assets or models to get a feel, a feeling, like a, an environment feel. It's a lot harder than you think. Just adding fog to a scene doesn't do it. it it's a skill and you've done a good job. I like the modeling too. Snuffy Girl says, yeah, that thing is freaking awesome. Great, yeah, it is. It's great, great work in Marmoset. Yep, but Snuffy Girl says it's Marmoset render. Yeah, I was I was amazed actually when I read that you'd done it in Marmoset. Uh, I've played with Marmoset, but I don't tend to use it very much. Um, so I'm so, uh, it's, it's a great looking render from Marmoset. Well, yeah, I'm amazed. I, I normally do this though in, in a 3D program and use a uh, rendering pro, uh, software like V-Ray or something. Android Lust says you need a creepy creature at the end of the corridor. Yeah, some somewhere down here, some creepy creature. It would look cool. Uh, but I like the detail you put into it as well. Like uh, all of the bits and pieces you've got here attached to the sides of the um of the corridor look very cool. Color scheme I quite like as well. The blue, the red, and the yellow. They, they always, red and blue are really complementary to each other, yellow as well. Uh, a green might look nice as well. Uh, on the colour spectrum, using complementary colours is always a good idea. You've done a nice job, the emissive is really nicely done. On the textures here. ICMC says, yeah, I wanted to go for an Aliens 1 feel. Well, you've certainly done that. Although the Aliens 1 corridors, I think, are a bit more um, maybe run down. Although I do see that you've done some nice uh, texturing work here. You've done some distressing here on the floor, which is good. I just remember the Alien corridors to be like really like a rust bucket. That that mining ship that they were on was a real rust bucket in Alien 1. Yours looks a bit cleaner to me. But I can still see the distressing you've done in the texturing, which is very nice to see. Um, just distressing along the edges here in the walls as well because uh, as I said to you guys time and time again don't make your stuff look too clean that's always a problem with 3D if it looks too clean it looks fake and you haven't done that you've added a lot of um, a lot of dirt grime and, and damage into your textures here and it looks great I'm just going to check the other one out here Different angle again, really nicely done. We get a better look at the um, the detail that has been put into the asset and looks really nice. Sniper says, but David Grohl at the end of the corridor. <laughs> Sniper Girl says, I honestly thought it was up. I did too. When I first saw the images before I read that you did it in Marmoset, I thought that you'd set it up in Unreal as well. So very nice job for doing it in Marmoset. Um, I think you said that it was a bit of a bitch to do in Marmoset, to set up in Marmoset, which I could understand. But you did a good job. It is. It's a very nicely modelled, textured and composed scene. Very atmospheric. 
and yeah, textured very nicely. Good color combination. Can't fault it. Looks good. It looks better than good. It looks 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 awesome. It looks great. I'd like to see it in Unreal. It'll make a really cool um, game level corridor for a game. You should play with Unreal ICMZ if you haven't already. Uh, it's free to download and use. You've only got to pay. Um, if you if you sell a game making UE4, then you pay Epic a percentage of the sale. So it's it's a pretty good deal. You're quite welcome. I love looking at the work that you guys do, and you're very talented, ICMZ. And thank you for showing it and letting me show it on the stream. I do love looking at the work that you guys are doing. I'm just looking at the colour difference between this shot to this shot. And when I say colour difference, I'm just noticing a bit more green in this shot and more blue in this one. It's obviously just to do with the lighting. I guess more green because the yellow is being picked up and being mixed with the blue which makes it look a little greener. ICMZ says, I haven't, I have it ready in Unreal. I just haven't been able to set up the lighting yet. Okay, well, we look forward to seeing it in Unreal too. It'll look mega cool in Unreal, I'm sure it will. Particularly the new version of Unreal, which I haven't actually downloaded and installed yet myself, which I have to do. Uh, version 4.22. I want to start playing with that because they've added a lot of really interesting, cool new stuff in the... 422 update, uh, Epic Games, as well as the real-time ray tracing stuff, you know, all that stuff, which I probably won't be using. Although, with the new driver now, I can use on my 1080 Ti because um, NVIDIA have enabled ray tracing support for the 1080 Ti. It doesn't run really, I haven't tried it, so I don't know, but from what I've read, uh, it doesn't run mega super awesome because it doesn't have the hardware that the, um, the RTX cards have, but um, it could be good for me just to, because you guys know I want to I want to make the House on the Hollow cinematic into a game. So, and I wasn't planning on adding any ray tracing support in that game, because my graphics card is an RTX. But now that I can actually use RTX on the 1080 Ti, just to develop a new E4, then I may um, look at playing around with the ray tracing stuff they've added. Could be cool. We'll see how we go. Uh, so I look forward to seeing it in Unreal. It would look cool. Really cool. Mercury says, like, seriously, it's freaking beautiful. It is. It's lovely. Absolutely lovely. You've done a great job. And I actually wanted to look at um, Edo's model as well. He, he doesn't like it. He says, I don't like it in the garbage, but I, I think it looks cool. If I was him, I wouldn't trash it. I think it looks great. I think a really nice modeling job. As Smurpery pointed out in the comments on the Discord, it's a very nebulous type of model to, um, a type of object to model to begin with. And I think, I think it looks, I think it looks great. I love it. Uh, yeah, Sniper Girl says we all hate our own work. Well, that's, that's true. We, we can be our own worst critic, can't we, Sniper Girl? Yeah, I think it's too amazing not to finish as well. I hope I hope it gets finished and textured because I love the model. I think it's it's beautifully modeled. I think it, it, it's been done really well. I love it. I love it too because it's so uh, disturbing and unusual. Yeah, it would look, as ICMC says, it would look great if it was textured. And uh, Android Dust says, I thought it looked nice. Yeah, Edo, Edo said he didn't like it. I don't, I don't understand why. <laughs> I think it looks great. <laughs> and textured up, it would look amazing. Uh, and what I really like about it, like I said, is it's disturbing, but it's such a unique looking model as well. Like, you know, we've got these guys coming out of this guy's belly, which has teeth. And, and all of these figures here that are sort of like coming out of the arm. I just think it's really interesting and beautifully modeled. Really, really nicely modeled. I'm just going through the Discord here for a second. So I just want to. Yeah. 
So I hope he I hope he finishes it and textures it up. So I think it'll look cool. Uh, Sniper Girl says if Ito doesn't like it, I'll take it off his hands and add it to my portfolio. <laughs> oh, that's cheeky, Sniper Girl. No, you don't use other people's work in your portfolio. That's not 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 cool. Don't do that. Don't do that. And besides which, you create enough of your own cool stuff, Sniper Girl. You don't need to use uh, anything Ido made. Your stuff is just as good. Yeah, no, I know you weren't serious. But I'm just trying to make a point for other people watching the stream that uh, don't ever use other people's work and try and pass it off as your own. That's not a good way to get in the industry. It's, it's not a good way to get good word of mouth in the industry. If people um, and people will find out because they always do. The internet is a big, big place, but the industry is not that large. The word does doesn't travel. You don't pass off other. Uh, other people's work is your own. A good example, and I'm not going to name names because I don't want to bag the person that this happened to, but one of the game studios I worked at, we were making a game. One of the environment artists used textures they'd ripped from World of Warcraft. Uh, they used those directly in the game, but thankfully it was picked up before the game shipped. But the guy, but he got the sack. They sacked him immediately. You can't use other people's work and pass it all as your own. Uh, Girl says, yes, using other people's work is a no-no. That's right. Game dev is a small community and get caught, you will not work in the industry. Well, that's that's right. Um, you won't. If word gets around that you steal other people's stuff, then you're not going to get a lot of work in the industry, I'm afraid. So just don't do it. It's much more fun to make your own stuff anyway. You know, that's the whole point of doing the 3D stuff is to make it yourself because it's fun. You don't just take other people's work and say it's yours. Where's the fun in that? Uh, Andrew Loss says, you'll get blacklisted if you steal. Well, yeah, I don't like to use the word blacklisting. Some studios some, it, it, it depends on the studio if they bla- if they do any blacklisting. Um, generally, they, they don't try and go out of their way to blacklist people unless those people are really bad. Uh, but it's just never a good idea, and it's, it's, it defeats the whole purpose of being a 3D artist if you make no 3D yourself and you just take other people's stuff and try and pass it off as your own. There's really no fun in that. My phone is ringing in the background. I'll let the answering machine get it. But my apologies, if you can hear it ringing... You'll probably hear the answering machine pick it up in a minute too. Smurfery says, oh, no bueno. That's right. ICMZ says, oh man, you can ruin your career doing things that you can. And I'm not really sure what happened to this other environment artist at the studio I worked at when he was fired. I don't know where he went to work next. Um, the studio was quite large, so... And we were broken into different teams for different games. And he wasn't in in the team that I was in so I wasn't that close to him so I didn't sort of follow up what happened to him after the fact but he was a nice guy like we used to have scrums and stuff and he was always nice to talk to Um, but yeah immediate immediate sack if you're found to be stealing other people's work (laughs) particularly texture work from World of Warcraft I don't think Blizzard would take too kindly to that like the studio the studio would get sued if if the game shipped with stolen work in it the studio gets get sued the publisher will get sued the studio will get sued it will just be a nightmare for everyone that's why you can't do it and don't do it uh Snuffy girl says uh one of my professors when i was a student told me a person that stole his work while he was working in the industry and another person's work uh yeah the person applied to the wrong studio because both of the previous professor and the other guy he ripped <clears throat> ripped off work at the studio from uh, the studio that one guy applied for. They flew his ass to the studio just to humiliate him. <laughs> well, that's going the extra mile, actually flying someone that you know is, um, has stolen work just so you can humiliate them in person. <laughs> that's a bit mean. But I get it. Because people put a lot of work... You you guys know. You guys do 3D. You know, you know how much 
time and love and energy you put into creating your work, um, which makes stealing your work and other people pretending for it to be theirs even worse, even more heartbreaking because you know how much time you, you devoted to it, how much love and inspiration you put into it. So for someone to steal it, it's just, just terrible. ICMZ says, sadly, I see a few art station posts where they use someone else's textures and just change the values and call it their own. I see it a lot as well, ICMZ. You are correct. I, I, I also see that a lot on art station, not just art station, but other places as well. Where people, I've had people steal my models. You guys know I sell my stuff online, my, my models online in, in stores. I've had people pass off those models as their own. Uh, there was one recently where I had to send some DMCA or DCMA, I can never remember which acronym way the acronym goes, some notices to have some stuff taken down from people who were claiming my work is theirs. Um, yeah, that, that's a, that, doesn't, that doesn't fly, I'm afraid. You cannot pass off my work as yours. You, you know, I, you can buy my models, you can use them in your own artwork, and that's your artwork, and that's yours, and you can say it's yours. Uh, but if you buy my models, <clears throat> and then you put them up, Put them online and say that you made them. That that's not cool and that's not right, and you can't do that. Normal, normally, I try and be forgiving as I can be with my own work. Um, it's different if it work that that the studios do because we have to be really careful there and really strict. But my own work, I, I you know I try and be as nice a guy as I can. Um, I do contact these people before sending notices saying, "Listen, this isn't cool. Please take it down." But if they ignore me, then I, they issue notices to have it taken down legally. Andrew Dust says to Snappy Girl, that's harsh, but that person deserved it. Uh, Snappy Girl says to Andrew Dust, yep. And Snappy Girl says, yeah, you go insane trying to get this stuff done. Yeah, well, you do. You know, it's a lot of work, a lot of effort we put into doing, making our stuff. <clears throat> and it is awful, as ICMZ says, and Snappy Girl says, uh, that's why I don't sell my crap. I don't want people to steal my work. Would suck too much if someone if if someone got a job using my assets while I was trying to get into the industry. That's perfectly valid. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I don't spread my models far and wide on the internet on every every site that sells stuff, sells three D models. I, I only pick. Well, at the moment, I'm only selling on two sites. Normally, I sell on three because I normally sell on the Eon View website as well. Because um. But they're only models that you can use in view. Uh, I sell on the creative market and I have a small selection, a trial selection on, on ArtStation on the, in their store at the moment. But only, only like four models compared to my creative market store, which is my, all of my models. So I don't, I, I, I limit the amount of places I sell my work to try and limit the amount of my, times my work gets stolen. Because uh, it's a pain in the ass having to troll the internet to find people who are stealing your work. Trust me. You know, it, it, it's a good couple of hours out of my day every once in a while where I have to do a Google search and troll through my through the internet to try and find out if anyone is using my work the way they shouldn't be or stealing my work. But of course, you know, if you don't put your work online, you can't make any money from it. So it's a catch-22. But the best way to go, like I said, is to limit it to a few stores. Don't put it on every 3D store. Uh, because what you'll find too is a lot of... Pl so and I've, I've had this happen to me on all of the stores where I sell my work. They use a stolen credit card. They buy your model legally. You don't get the sale as the, as the um, creator because the credit card is stolen, so the sale gets reversed. Then they put that model online on a file sharing site. So they, you know, and I've had to have models taken down that way as well. <laughs> That's just a fact of selling online, regardless of what it is. Uh, Andrew Lust says, too many thieves. I thought the 3D community was better. The, the, the 3D community is. There's just good and bad everywhere in every industry in real life or on the internet, you know. You're always going to get those occasional bad people. And I try and price my models as reasonably as I can for the amount of work that it takes me to make them. Um, I get that some people don't have, a don't have much money. That's fine. Look, I understand that. So they want to use, the, the, they see my model, they like my model. Maybe they can find it online for free instead of paying for it. 
I understand that side of things. Like I said though, I, I try and make my models as cheap as I possibly can for the amount of work I've done. And if they use my model because they like it, and they're using it in their artwork and they're not trying to pretend it's theirs, I'm less worried about that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm flattered they like my model, put it that way. Um, but it does reduce the amount of sales I can make if it's, if it's available on a file sharing site. Why would you pay for my model if you can go somewhere and download it for free sort of thing? Um, so that's the reason I really take the... I send out the notices to have it taken down. Not because I'm so pissed off that they're using my model or they've stolen it. Just that it starts to affect my sales then, after the fact, if people can download it for free. So, no point of having a, sale, a store online if no one wants to buy anything because they can get it all for free. <laughs> but uh, I understand where you're coming from, Snuffy Girl. Snuffy Girl says, uh, wow, sorry to hear that. That's, it's just, I, it's fine. I, I, I didn't get upset about it. I've, I've been selling online for, like I said, seven years, and it's just a fact of life selling online. That is going to happen to you at some stage, and it's going to continue happening to you at different stages. Like, you know, it's not constant. It's not a constant thing, but occasionally, occasionally you'll, you'll come across that someone's stolen your model and put it online for free sort of thing, or they've they bought it, reversed the sale, and then put it online for free. And when I say reverse the sale, it's because they, they use stolen credit cards. That's that's how they're doing it. So never get upset if you're selling on marketplaces and a sale gets reversed. Don't don't scream at the marketplace. They're just doing what they have to do legally. Uh, if somebody's used a stolen credit card to, to purchase it, so. Snuffy Girl says, was honestly uh, thinking of selling the dragon and online, but I don't want to put you guys off selling your work. Please don't, um, don't, don't, don't get the wrong idea here. Just going to make a quick save of that. Uh, I'm also just going to open up the second column to make a smart material from that because it's different from the first column smart material. And then we can look at uh, making some adjustments to the model itself. So this is column two. It's just telling me I created an old version. The new version of Substance wants to um, resave all of its files. I don't know why. <laughs> but yeah, please don't let me put you off selling your models online. It, it doesn't happen a lot. It just happens occasionally. Uh, so don't, don't, don't be frightened to sell your stuff online. I was like you, Sniper Girl, many years ago before I started selling my work online. I, I used to think to myself, I don't want to risk putting this up online because somebody might steal it and I put a lot of work into it and I don't want other people to claim it as theirs. Um, so that was a big fear of mine as well. I, so I get where you're coming from, Sniper Girl, but once I started selling online, that fear started to diminish quite a bit. So, yeah. Maybe start with something that you don't love, 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 you know what I mean? Try, always try and put the best stuff you can, make the best stuff you can, but maybe start with a model that you wouldn't mind if it got stolen. That's a, And the only reason I say that is because once you've got the model online and you've been selling your stuff for a little while, it, you start to come, calm down. You don't worry about it so much. So I don't really worry about it at all now. You know, it used to be like 99% worry in the beginning, and I would say it's probably about 2% worry now for me. Yeah. Um, Andrew Dust says, or oh, worse, someone stole your model and resold it to someone else. Yes, that is even worse. Uh, you know, if I find out they're trying to resell my stuff, then, then I'm going to come at you for all I'm worth. Be fair warned, people, whoever look at, is looking at this video. I'm lenient when it comes to, you know, people wanting to use it for their own personal stuff. But if you buy a model of mine and you try and resell it on another marketplace, oh, you're in for a world of hurt. <laughs> I'm going to come at you like no one's business because that's not cool. And that, that's against all of the terms of service of every, every place you buy models from. You cannot resell the work. You can use it in images for your own commercial work. You can even use my models in a game if you're making one, uh, provided you buy them from my website, not my creative market. You actually, Creative Market, they're changing their uh, licensing terms in next month, in the next 30 days. 
only the shop owners know about it. It's going to be announced in the next uh, in the next month on the creative market. At the moment, the creative market has two licenses. They're breaking that up now into three licenses. Uh, so you will be able to buy my models on my creative market store and use them in games, but it is the most expensive license. And let me give you an example. A model I sell on the creative market site for $15, which is like the, um, and that will be under the license, so you can't use it commercially, it'll be $15. If you want to use it commercially, it'll be like $22. If you want to use it commercially, make 100,000 saleable items and put it in a game, it's going to be like $200. Whereas if you buy it from my store on my website, on phildoes3d.com, I allow you, uh, I give you license to put them in your games and it's only going to cost you like the $22 price. So just something to keep in mind. If you want to buy my models, that is, and you want to use them in a game, buy them from my store because uh, you'll get them much cheaper. <laughs> and again, that's not something I have much control over because the creative market set certain values for different licenses, and you, as a, as a as a store owner, I have to follow their recommendations. So. HMZ says, are you using the that wallpaper from that wallpaper program from Steam? Oh yes, I am. <laughs> I was thinking, what what's going on? You're talking about this. Yeah, I am. I'm using uh you can't see it down here in my taskbar, but yeah, I'm using Wallpaper Engine. I bought it on Steam. I love it. I love the animated um screensavers you backgrounds you can use with that program. And I just love this um image from Dark Souls. But there's hundreds, thousands of different backgrounds you can that are free if you buy Wallpaper Engine on Steam, and, and it's really cheap. It's only like six bucks, I think, to buy the uh, Wallpaper Engine, and you can choose from all these animated backgrounds, which I think is cool. Microsoft should have built in animated backgrounds into Windows. I don't know why they didn't. I think it's a great idea. I know you can run videos and stuff as a background as a screensaver, but um, yeah, I like this program you can take still images it comes with an editor where you can take still images and make them animated so it's really cool Andrew Loss says sell the models you only put blood and sweat into keep the ones you put blood and sweat and tears into that's right yeah it's not cool as ICMC says Snuffy Girl says uh, what you mean to say is do have do have a particular set of do you have a very particular set of skills skills I have acquired over a very long career skills that make me a nightmare for people like you if they steal your work and try to sell your work <laughs> that's right uh, ICMC says love the program you can even add your own yeah I know it's, it's a really cool program wallpaper engine I recommend you guys if you want animated wallpapers for windows buy it it's on steam it's really cheap it's really good smurfery says phil hasn't seen that movie which movie are we talking about you're being cheeky smurfery barbecue you want me to give you a slap what movie what are you talking about are you guys trolling me what's going on who am i what's going on who what 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 uh, anyway, let's make a smart material of this column too. And we're going to call it my column two. I actually think this, this layer is blank, but anyway. And smart material, there we go. Andrew Lust says, wait, it was a movie quote? What, what, what was the movie quote? What, what? Do you have... I don't get it. I still don't get it. <laughs> I, I don't get what, what, what was the movie quote you guys are talking Liam Neeson, Smurfery says, but what's the movie, movie quote? 
The quote from Sniper Girl was from a movie. Okay. But so you're saying is this do you have do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. What's the movie? Because I don't I don't recognize the quote. Tell me what the movie is that you're quoting. The movie, oh, the movie is Taken. Oh, I, I haven't watched Taken, so I don't know. Yeah, no, I haven't watched any of the Taken movies. That's my excuse then for not knowing. Okay. Well, there you go. Now I know. <laughs> Uh, so we saved that smart material. That's all good. Uh, yes, save it. Why not? All right. Let us grab one of these columns. I'm just going to go into isolation mode so it's easier for me to see. A smoker says, told you so. Snuffy girl says to Android last, this is what happens when you deal with old... Oh, oh, oh. oh you get the stink eye. Sniper girl. <laughs> wow, indeed, ICMZ. I will get him. She gets the stink eye and she gets the raspberry. So cheeky, so cheeky. I know you're kidding, and I'm kidding as well when I give you these stink eyes and raspberries. Don't worry. <laughs> Just because I'm a little bit older than you guys. I've already selected the top and the bottom, so I'm just going to detach these. Uh, no, I'm not going to detach to an element or to a clone. I'm just going to... Do I want to detach to element? Maybe to an element. Something weird going on here. I'm going to actually just do a normal detach. And I'm going to assign these a different texture. Just initially. So when we send it to Substance Painter, I can assign a new, um, a new texture to it. Now I'm just going to reattach them. Good. Um, Snappy Girl says, like I always say, life's too short to be serious all the time. That is incredibly true, Sniper Girl, and it's only something you, you come to appreciate more as you get older and get gain more life experience. And I've been reminded of it recently too because a good friend of mine, I think I mentioned it on stream just before Easter, is is quite ill. Well, when I say quite ill, has to have an operation, which is never a good thing. Uh, and that makes you appreciate life all the more. Anyway, so we've um, attached it. Let's send it to Substance Painter. This is probably going to complain when I first try and send it. Yep. It's just because I'm using a, uh, a a modified template, not the default template, so that's why it, why it keeps complaining. Uh, but it only does it the first time. If I do it now, it should be fine. Uh, actually, and what I'm going to do here before I do that is I'm just going to rename it. Okay, it's called column 9. I'm going to rename this one to column 1 new. Now we can send it over. 
Again, she's going to complain. But life is too short to take things too seriously. I completely agree. Okay, let's start by uh, adding the smart material to the central column here. Again, this is my smart material, I'm not using one of the default smart materials, it's one that I just saved out, remember? So it's cool. Remember I was saying to you guys, don't rely on, on smart materials, just a one click thing. Well, I'm not doing that because I created the smart material by doing it by hand. So. Uh, because no studio wants to hire you if, if the only thing you can do is click a smart material to texture up your models. They want they want a little bit more from you than that. We just got to find it. Uh, J K L my column one. There we go. Just give algorithmic a minute there. There we go. Uh, now why does that look different? What is going on here? That is not correct. It has not applied that smart material correctly. Trying to work out why. To do with this one. Oh, I know why. Oh, uh, because we didn't bake out the mesh maps. So let's do that. Two uh, K should be big enough, actually. We we'll use the high, po the low poly as the high poly because I only, I'm only doing this for the texturing stage. I'm not going to use these maps apart from the ambient occlusion, maybe. Uh, Andrew Lost says it cleaned your material. Yeah, it's because I forgot to bake that bake these maps out. You should find once they're baked out, it should show up correctly. There we go. I always forget that stage. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention too, you remember last week's Mapery Barbecue? You were asking when I was doing the painting on the texture. You asked me to you asked to look at the UV maps, and I think you asked because the the resolution I was painting in looked really low. Uh, that wasn't anything to do with the UV map. Yeah, that wasn't to do with the UV map. That was to do with the size of the texture paint up here. I had it set to like 512. That's why when I was painting, and I forgot to look at it myself, why, why when I was painting it looked really low resolution. It's because it wasn't set high enough here. That's why, I'm, but I'm using a, 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 um, a custom template that I created now just so that I don't have to worry about it and forget about it again. Uh, so when I paint, paint now, I'm painting in 4K. Which should come up a lot, a lot nicer. <laughs> okay, so one of the, uh, I think I wanted to add a smart material. Did I create a smart material for that gold? Let me have a look. My column, my column, rusty gold. I think I did. I didn't create my on the front of it, but I called it rusty gold. So let's select the top and the bottom of the column, and let's pull in the rusty gold. Uh, I want to pull back quite a lot on the um, on the height. I may even turn the height value off. I think. Maybe just a little bit of um, not quite that much though. Smurfery says it wasn't the resolution. I was just curious about the how. Okay, but now I don't remember why. <laughs> I thought you. I thought. I thought you were being diplomatic, asking to look at my UVs because you noticed when I was painting it looked quite low resolution. So I thought you might have thought, oh, maybe his UVs are really small, which would cause that problem. 
and I thought that you were just being diplomatic and asking to see them for that reason. Uh, but you just wanted to see them, and that's fine. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to point out that was the reason. It's because my, my, my paint resolution here was too low, which has no effect on the textures I exported. It just has an effect in the viewport. ICMC says, speaking of UVs, Phil has Ryzen improved over the past months. I still plan on trying it out one day. Uh, you, every update, they improve it, and they update it constantly. Um, they, they do at least one update a month on the program. Uh, and, yeah, it, it's great. They don't add a lot of new features every time they do an update. They basically fix bugs and... Um, maybe add one or two small new stuff here and there uh, but i love the program it saves me so much time you have no idea if i was to have to do this um to do the you being by hand i it would just take forever that's the reason i really love um ryzen that's better just want a little bit of um of roughness there on the uh, texture but we need to overpaint this because this is. I just want to see what's going on here. Okay. So the, I want to overpaint the mud layer gears because the mud layer is muddying up the entire thing. Um, now, this is a column, but there's nothing to say the top and the bottom of this column can't be metal. Nothing at all. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to turn off the mud layer. Uh, the underlying layer is just a metallic layer. So I want to add a paint layer. And we want to do some distressing around the corners of these columns. So let's choose a brush. And I love, 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 love the Dirt 2 brush. I use it all the time. I'm just about everything. We're just going to reduce the size of the brush. I'm going to use my pen. I did fix that problem we were having with um, with the Wacom pen. I showed you guys how I did how I fixed that problem last not last just before Easter. Uh, actually, I'm I'm looking at the edge here. This is not chamfered. Do you guys know how much I hate anything not being chamfered? So before I go too far with this, just going to save the file. We're going to jump back into Max. I'm going to chamfer up these edges. Because, yeah, I hate anything not being chamfered. So... How am I going to do this? Uh, uh. You would be like that, wouldn't you? All right, let's do a try doing selection from the top here. Alt. And get rid of those. Let's use that lovely new chamfer modifier that comes with Max 2020. If I can find it. Did I not put it in? When I reinstalled. Seriously, Philip, you did not put a button for it. Wow. 
Unbelievable. Let's add a button for it right now. In fact, I like to keep everything nice and even, so I've got to add two buttons. So. Can't believe I didn't put it there. Hmm. I think they call it quad chamfer from memory. No, they don't. I just want to do this because it's something I use all the time. It should it really should be on the buttons. Champa. And what am I going to put on the last button? Um, what else do I use quite a lot? Could use a I could uh, let that story bevel there for the time being anyway. I may come back and change that in a minute. Uh, let's throw the champer down. Even though it's just called champer, like the old modifier, it is the new version. So you don't. I don't blame you on those edges. Yeah, no. I you guys know I I hate a hard edge. Looks like I might have missed a couple actually. Maybe not, that could just be the way that, um... Let's just zoom in here on the top one so I can get a better look. I always like to use at least three segments generally. Just to give me a nice smooth edge. I don't want to go too high. I don't want to go nuts, but just just a smooth edge. And just bring it down just a little bit. I think that should be good. Just just a little bit of a soft edge there. Uh, Sniper Girl says, How hard is it to make seamless materials from photogrammetry bakes? I'm trying to understand why you'd want to from a photogrammetry. Photogrammetry, generally, you don't need to make a, a, a tileable texture. It's sort of... It, if you... If you the texture created as part of the photogrammetry capture, generally you wouldn't make tileable because it would be really hard to get the mesh to be tileable that way. So maybe I need to understand why you want to make a photogrammetry texture tileable to begin with, Sniper Girl. Uh, if you just want to use the texture on its own, I can't see how it would be useful. Yeah, well, there is a way to do it in Photoshop using the uh, offset filter. That's generally what I use if I want to make a texture tileable in Photoshop. Use the offset filter. It's the best I've, best way I've found to do it. And then as Smurfery says, you can use the clone tool. Or I actually, what I generally do is I, I grab a section, copy and paste over the, over the line and blend with the eraser tool. But the clone tool would work just as well. I use the clone tool too. The snail head. Um, actually, Substance Alchemist. You can do it in Alchemist. You know the new program from Substance Painter that 
is in beta at the moment. Let me just move my camera so you guys can see that program. You can do it in Alchemist. It does it automatically. Yeah, pretty much automatically. Just a couple of uh, sliders that you can adjust to to make the blend. But apart from that, you can do a, a tileable in Alchemist pretty much automatically. So you could give that a go. I haven't used used it myself yet, but uh, I've seen I've seen a tutorial of a guy doing it well, on the on the algorithmic website. I believe that there's a, a, a on YouTube ch channel there's a video of a guy showing you. Sniper Girl says I think Painter has a clone tool. It might work better that way. It could have a clone tool as well. Because, like I said, I know that Alchemist has a clone tool. And remember, I'm pretty sure if you if you uh, have a subscription to Painter, I, you can download Alchemist as well. You don't have to pay for it. Let's collapse our stack. And that's a nice smooth edge, so I'm happy with that. And there was just one thing I wanted to... I noticed there might have been a bit of a problem here. And that's that little gap we have between the top of the column and this. And that's my bad. My bad. So I'm just going to move this up. It doesn't matter. It's not going to affect our UVs. Not enough to worry about. We're retexturing it anyway, so. There we go. That's better. Actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to undo that. And the reason is because I have 12 columns. I don't want to do that for each for 12 columns by hand. So I'm going to throw down an edit poly modifier and I'm going to do it via the modifier and that way I can copy and paste the modifier to the other columns. And that will make my life much easier. Now the bottom one was okay. It's just the top one. Uh, Sniper Girl says, been thinking of making a material library of stuff that I create by photogrammetry and see if they'd sell. Uh, photogrammetry stuff sells, always sells really well. So I'd um, certainly say yes, you should. It depends on how much you sell it for as to how well it will sell. That goes for anything though. Which means seamless materials. Oh, okay. Again, not knowing what type of thing you want to put up for sale. It's just, it's going to be really, it's going to be hard to, to, to make an asset, a mesh, 3D object that's photogrammetry tileable, depending, not impossible, but just depends on what the object is you're trying to, to make tileable, which I'm assuming you want to do if you're trying to make the texture tileable, because otherwise I don't know why you'd want to make the texture tileable because the texture relates directly to the mesh, to the 3D object. Unless you just mean you want to take a photo of a texture, which you then want to turn into like a substance that you can use displacement on or something. Maybe, maybe that's what you mean. Maybe. Uh, but again, Alchemist, Project Alchemist. You can do it in Alchemist, I know. I've seen I've seen the demo of it being done. And it's, um, it's a... You, you apply the the tile the tile filter. You slide a couple of adjustments on the slider, and it does it pretty much automatically for you. There is other software as well, plugins you can get for Photoshop to do it automatically as well. But I think Alchemist would probably be the best way to go. I, I know I haven't done it in Painter myself, so I can't speak to, to Substance Painter. Okay, so we've we've championed it. I made that fix to the, pardon me, top of the column. And uh, now we're going to send it back to the planner. Yes, I want to replace it. Uh, Sniper Girl says, I'm talking about making a material of brick. Oh, bricks are a stone wall, grass, dirt, etc. Oh, okay, making them seamless. I, 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 okay, now I understand. I understand. 
I was thinking you were like, oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I get it. If it was like a brick wall, that's completely understandable. Much easier to tile as well. When I think photogrammetry, I think like, like, like the the top of the rotunda type thing. Yeah, which would be difficult to make tileable. I think a larger object, not not a smaller like texture set object. Um, you want to make them seamless so people can use them and can include a height map in case they want to do parallax, occlusion or displacement. Um, actually, displacement here in using height information is one of the new features in, in Substance Painter 2019.1, which is what you see me using here. Um, and it just, it's, it's incredibly cool. I haven't played around with it much myself yet, but um, again, it's a really cool thing. Being able to see in live time tessellation and displacement on your mesh inside of Substance Painter is cool. It's a nice update, 2019. And that is what I'm using. Euro, it's good to see you, Euro. How are you? Did you have a good weekend? I actually was talking, we were just talking about you. Because um, we were talking about that model you made. You know, the... Um... <laughs> I see you posted an image Android lost in the gallery on the Discord. You tried to censor it. I'm just trying to work out. Uh, yeah, I won't show it on on Twitch because of the titties. Even though you did censor it, you've covered covered up the nips, which is pretty much uh, what Twitch require. I think they're okay as long as you cover the, the, the nipples up. But I, I won't risk it. But jump on the Discord server because Android Lust has posted another model uh, in the gallery section. But Euro, it's good to see you, Euro, and I hope you did have a good Easter. I'm just going through the Discord here, just uh, excuse me being rude and not paying attention to my chat. You guys were talking about a driver. Asmoperi mentioned that one of the AMD drivers broke. Agisoft. Which is always a pain when that happens. There's a message I'm trying to find. That's why I'm... going through everything. Yeah, we weekend was chill. Well, that's good. It's always good to have a chill weekend. Best kind of weekend is a chill weekend. I baked out the meshes, yes. Okay. Uh, the column, I'm selected the column, yes, good. Let's jump into our smart materials so that we can load up that smart material I created before. Uh, which is my, 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 Am I going blind? Blinder. Where is it? My column one. There <laughs> we go. <laughs> I knew I'd find it eventually. Uh, Euro says, talking about me and which model? I'm intrigued. No, it wasn't you. I'm my apologies. It was Edo. I'm 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 confusing Euro and Edo. I'm sorry. <laughs> My apologies, it was my bad, I got confused, which is not hard for Phil to get confused, as you guys know. <laughs> Sorry, Euro. Uh, Android Lust says to snap a girl, I know, I don't like censoring the human body. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> yeah, and again, it, it probably would be okay, Android Lust, it's just, just, Sometimes you got to be careful with Twitch because Twitch will, will like give you a ban, so which means I won't be able to stream until the ban is over. And if I keep doing it, then they'll ban me permanently. <laughs> uh, the model looks great, though. I can see it here on in the Discord channel in the gallery, which doesn't surprise me. You always make nice models, Android Lust. 
Android Lust love it. Yeah, it does. It looks great. It looks great. I don't. I, I love the model as well. But just she's got she's got those bare titties. Even though her arm is covering up the nips, she has those bare titties. So I'm just going to play it safe. <laughs> We're going to keep it clean. It's a bit annoying as an artist actually, because the human body, as you guys know, is used in art, has been used in art for centuries. Um, but Twitch's terms of service as a streamer means we have to be very careful about showing the human body and anatomy which goes against what being an artist is all about because like I said that's, that's the human body is the most beautiful thing to create so and it's been used in art since time and more you know gone since the beginning of time so it's a, a little annoying I, I get where Twitch are coming from though they don't want you know people to be streaming channels that are like softcore porn Pretending it's art, you know? Android Lust says, in fact, I will post the finished version. Okay, post the finished version and I'll make a judgment, Android Lust, as to whether I'll show it on the stream. Uh, Euro says, yeah, I've seen some cool character stuff on the Discord. Keep up. Yeah, he makes some beautiful stuff. Android Lust is a, another machine. He's a machine. He does. He makes some really nice stuff. Android Lust says, yeah, uh, the internet doesn't take kindly to human bodies. I got shadow banned on Instagram for it. Yeah, it, it's because they're so paranoid nowadays about things. Uh, you know, it, yeah, society is paranoid. The PC society, you know. People complain about our governments being too PC and trying to control our lives. And and, and these these businesses and companies want to make sure they don't offend anyone. That's the reason, really. Because, yeah, <laughs> they, they want as many customers as possible, so they don't want to offend anyone. Oh, very nice. It's a nice model, Android Lust. Again, though, I can see the titty, so I can't show it on the stream. Although I do like, I like the little heart you've got over the titty. I think that's very, very, very nice. Guys, jump on the Discord server, check it out in the gallery. Let's see the, the images Android Lust has posted there, because they're very nice. I would love to show them on stream for you, but... I don't want to risk twi Twitch's wrath. But it does look amazing. And you should not be ashamed of doing that sort of thing. Guys and girls, if you want to create a human body, you want them to be naked, you want to show all their bits and pieces, that's 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 art, that's fine. Uh, it's just as me as a streamer, I can't show them on Twitch because tw it's against the terms of service of Twitch. So jump on Discord. Another good reason for you guys and girls to join the Discord server and you can check them out there. I'd love to show them. I, I, if it was just up to me, I would show them. Uh, now the rusty gold, let's throw that back down again on the bottom and the top. Let's move up here so we can get a good look at our column. We're going to have to make those adjustments to the height again. I think it was under the metallic. I think it's the metal that we're seeing here as far as the height information goes. So I'm just going to pull back a little bit. We just want a little bit of a bump. I want, again, I'm going through the Discord here. My apologies. I just, you guys, because I've been away for that for last week, there's so many messages here that I have to catch up with. And I want to make sure I say the right thing before I open my mouth. So I'm just, again, looking for a specific post. Are you in chat? Are, are, you, are you watching on Twitch, Edo? I don't think Edo is. I keep getting mixed up, Edo and Euro mixed up because of the three words and they're both green. Yeah, but. <laughs> um, 
but I wanted to congratulate um, Edo on getting that job as well, which is excellent, awesome news. And congratulations, Edo, for, for getting the job. Android Lust said, Android Lust says, uh, but I don't get it either. I blame conservatives. Android Lust, yeah. Android Lust says, or oh, liberals in Australia. That's right. They're liberals here in Australia. Conservatives in the US, liberals in Australia. Same thing. Democrats in the US, Labor in Australia. Same thing. The Liberal Party in Australia, that's them. The National Party as well. They're called the Liberal Coalition here. So it's a coalition between the Liberal Party and, and the National Party. The National Party are the Liberal Party, but for people in the country, for farmers and things, but they're both the same. They're both conservative. They form a coalition together anyway, so. And we're going to an, an election, and then in two weeks' time, we have uh, an, uh, an election for our next Prime Minister. Please, I'm hoping that the Liberal, because the Liberals have been in government two terms now, so for about eight years in this country. I, I would like... Um, I would like Labor actually to to uh, to come through to win because I want a change of government. The Liberal Party don't believe in climate change, and I do. So I want something done about the climate and climate change. Let's add another paint layer. Change our brush. Uh, so yes. I want climate change. I, I want my politician, my, I want my next Prime Minister to take climate change seriously. Sniper Echo, it's good to see you, buddy. How are you? Did you have a good Easter, Sniper Echo? Hopefully you did. Again, I'm going to jump to using the pen again. How are we going? Uh, Sniper Girl says, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if Trump wins again. Yeah, I've heard people say that. I hope it ain't true, but I have heard it. I've heard that people say that they think he'll win again. He'll get a second term. Which, uh, yeah, well, again, I, I don't like to get involved in the politics of other countries. It's, the politicians in my country are bad enough. Uh, so I, I don't like to pass judgment on politicians in, in other countries. I'll certainly judge the ones in my country, though. Particularly if they don't believe in climate change. That's just insane. We're all going to die. The planet's going to heat up to a greenhouse effect and we're all going to die. I'm a cheery, cheery today, aren't I? Euro says, mine did at their conference this weekend, declared a climate emergency. Well, that's what every politician in every country should be doing. Because it is a climate emergency. I don't, I don't I, we've just we're, we're coming into winter in this country now so it's nice and cool in Melbourne where I live but the last summer just gone it was the worst summer I can ever remember and I've lived in Melbourne now for like 15 years or so it was the hottest I can ever ever remember it was terrible um, and if that's a taste of things to come God help us all it was shocking really shocking I'm just going above the line here and there just to make it look a bit more uh, interesting. <laughs> Sniper says, "How I'm, I'm doing well. Um, it's, it was Easter. Easter last week, Sniper, okay. You can't tell me you can't, didn't know it wasn't Easter last week, particularly living in Ireland. Come on. <laughs> Sniper, okay, says, must get some chocolate for that. Uh, Yuri says, keep it on, keep it. In the fridge, Sniper Echo, global warming, that's right. Sniper Girl says, uh, the Dems have a habit of forcing a bad candidate 
and expecting people to vote for them just because the other guy is bad. When that happens, uh, like people, me, just stay, stay home. Are you talking about Joe Biden, um, sniper girl? <laughs> I, I don't think... Uh, look, I've got nothing against Mr. Biden. I think he's a decent human being. Um, but he's so old. I mean... Uh, Trump is old too. Well, why are all these old, old white men being put forward? What is it with the Democrats and um, old white men? Uh, uh, Bernie Sanders, he's the same. He's ancient as well. I mean, they're dinosaurs. Put somebody in that's a bit younger. And I know that there are other candidates for the Democrats that are younger. Um, so I'd be, I, I'm going to be very disappointed if uh, the Democrats decide to go with Mr. Biden. Not because he's a bad man, just because he's so old. Yeah, it should happen everywhere, I agree. Snuffy Girl says, uh, Snuffy Girl says it's going to get worse, much worse climate-wise. I think it is too. Because, you know, the longer we leave it, the worse it gets and the longer it'll take to fix if we can fix it once it gets above a certain temperature it's a runaway effect it can't be can't be fixed that's the really scary thing about this you know w once the temperature reaches a threshold then we start to get that runaway greenhouse effect that no matter what we decide to do is too late now that's the reason it's really really vital that something gets done about this soon or now it's, you know something should have been done 10 years ago Governments around the world should have taken this much more seriously 10 years ago. And that's the frightening thing. Uh, Euro says, Aussie winter is like our midsummer. <laughs> it's crazy. How, yeah, I know it is. It's, in, it's insane how, how hot this country gets. Insane. I told you guys how, how warm it got in summer. I mean... There were days where Melbourne, where I am, was was pushing like close to close to fifty degrees Celsius, like forty seven degrees Celsius type thing. I mean, that's incredibly hot. That's it, I know you guys in the US work in Fahrenheit, and I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit, but we have spoken about it before. But it's high. It's high, uh, and it's just getting worse and worse and worse, and it's going to continue getting worse and. When you reach a certain temp, the other bad thing too was it, it used to happen for a day and then we get a cool change. Now the heat lasts a whole week it's, and it, it's relentless. Night, day, it's hot, hot, hot. So if that's a taste of things to come, God help us. Because the human body, it, it really, heat has a really bad effect on your body. Really, really bad. So if you go through extended periods of time being really warm like overly hot you do really bad things to your body I mean it's okay for me I can stay in, in, in the house here and, and put the air conditioning on but um, what if you don't have air conditioning what if you can't afford air conditioning what if you're stuck outside in a job where you, you work outside and you can't have air conditioning I mean that's not a solution just you know yeah, and these politicians, I'm sure they sit in air-conditioned offices all day and they don't really care. Um, they will. They will start to care. And we all start to die. You guys know I've been bitching about this for, for ages, though. It's a real bugbear of mine. Climate change. All... Uh, and this country, my country is is really bad because we we dig up and burn coal and coal is terrible for the environment terrible terrible so you know i'm not saying my country is great my country is terrible because of all the mines the coal mines we have it's just shocking uh euro says we're due 53 fahrenheit oh 11 celsius sounds like heaven I think it's I think it's about 20 maybe 19 Celsius here at the moment the middle of the day and at night it drops down to about about 10 Celsius but we're not in winter yet when we get into winter it'll get a lot cooler cooler 50 degrees Celsius is like 122 Fahrenheit well there you go you die in 50 oh I nearly died in you know 47 it was terrible and when they send me out to those mines 
which are all you know you know when the when the studio sends me out to the mining to the mines in the middle of Australia there to do some work design work uh, well photogrammetry stuff I'm not, I'm not I'm not becoming a miner when I'm sent out there um, they're getting even hotter again and you know you, you guys know how much I bitch about how hot that is now but those mining sites are starting to get even hotter so pretty soon I don't know I don't know what's going to happen I won't be <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to go out there if it's going to hit like 70 degrees Celsius in one of these mines and, and that's that is really dangerous weather 50 degrees is dangerous when it's when 50 degrees like happens for a week solid and the nights don't get don't get lower than <coughs> pardon me don't get lower than like 35 or 36 degrees Celsius Sniper Girl says, my country, all the politicians are bought and sold, so big oil are willing to uh, dominate everyone, doom everybody as a result. Well, it's pretty much how things work in this country with mines, Sniper Girl. They're pretty much the same. Big mining companies dominate the, the economy in Australia. So they give big donations to political parties, so the political parties will do what they want them to do, and that that's... Grant more mining licenses and digging up more coal. The Labor Party aren't, aren't, aren't so bad. It's a Liberal Party that uh, are for coal. Labor actually want to reduce the amount of coal we use, which is why I hope they get elected in two weeks' time. We do have mandatory voting in this country, unlike you guys in the US, um, where you can decide whether you want to vote or not. It's against the law not to vote in Australia. You must register when you turn 18 and uh, you must vote. If you don't, you get fined. So that's something. That means we always get a good turnout for voters. Like a good a good number of people vote because you have to. So like voter turnout's like 98% or something. There, there's always going to be a couple of people that are going to give the finger to the government because they don't like them and they're not going to vote. Um, generally people do though. Now, I, 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 when I was younger, I used to think mandatory voting was terrible. I used to bitch and bitch and bitch about it. But as I've gotten older, I've come to realise mandatory voting is a good thing. Um, it means everyone gets their say. And it means that you're not, the vote is not going to be swayed just by one agenda of people, if you know what I mean. Like, everybody gets their say, everybody gets a vote. So... Whatever the result is, is going to be a good reflection of what the Australian people, most of the Australian people want. Whereas if it's not mandatory, then there can be people that didn't vote that have to get stuck with an, an, an outcome that they didn't want because those people that did go and vote maybe were more conservative or something, as an example. Uh, the, the black voters in the United States, I've, I've heard talk of, you know, of intimidation and things when they try and go and vote if they try to go to vote uh, so their vote doesn't get counted or for whatever reason and that skews the vote in the end and means that someone can get elected that maybe the rest of the American people don't want so but I, I used to hate mandatory voting I used to bitch about it when I was when I was 18 it was like man it's Saturday and you want me to go down to the voting place and vote Take time off of my day, you know, when I could be listening to music, lying on my bed, watching TV, whatever I was doing when I was 18 years old. Most likely I would have been out at some um, rave, drinking too much. But I can't do that because i got to go and vote. Uh, she, ICMZ says hottest weather I've ever been in is 118 degrees, which is like 45 degrees Celsius. Well, that, that'll give you a bit of feel for what what summer was just like here in Melbourne for me. It was one of the hottest and longest summers I can remember, and I'm I'm freaking out that that's what we're going to. It's just going to get worse and worse. 
which is why I said to you guys I was thinking about um, moving to Tasmania, which is right below where Melbourne is, Melbourne is closer to Antarctica, because I hate the heat. I hate the heat so much you have no idea. So the closest, the closer I can get to Antarctica, the better. So I've, I've even considered moving, m- moving down there, leaving where I live here in Melbourne, where I've been for 15 years, and moving to Tasmania just just to escape the heat. Um, Euro says, yeah, we have a good climate here, although last year's heat wave was noticeable even for us. Thankfully, our local energy is all renewable and runs in surplus most of the time. Yeah, see, we a lot of our energy now is still coal. We burn a lot of coal in coal-fired power stations in this country. And our electricity is incredibly expensive to boot, so work that one out. You know, we dig the coal up in our own country. We have our own power stations, yet electricity is outrageously expensive in this country. So much so that it's become a real political issue for this election, the cost of electricity. Yeah, you can be fine for not voting, Sniper Girl, that's right. Uh, Euro says, uh, over here political parties are prohibited from going near to voting stations. They are in this country as well. Volunteers, there are, there are volunteers when you go to vote here, when you walk into the voting station. They're handing out flyers for each of the parties, but politicians are, not, are banned as well. They can't go anywhere near the voting booths while people are voting. Uh, but, but volunteers can hand out pamphlets for the different parties. So you, you've generally got to run the gauntlet of people trying to hand you something when you go to vote. Because they're all, they're all there to all have, trying to hand out their pamphlet for their political party. The volunteers are. Okay, I'm just going to go around. I'm not going to do the top of the column here because I think that butts up against something else. Um, Sniper Girl says, no, they don't really do that so much here. They just get caught making the voter map court making the voter map so minorities voting districts don't count as much oh, okay um process known as gerrymandering well that's terrible as well everybody's vote should count equally sniper Rico says it's sad but unless a massive weather event happens uh, in the u.s that causes massive loss of life and infrastructure not much will happen on the climate change front in many countries and the U.S. has had a lot of really bad natural disasters. I mean, New Orleans, that was pretty bad. And that was because, you know, that the retaining dam thing busted and flooded the city. But, but that was caused by a really bad hurricane, I think you guys call them over in the U.S. We call them a cyclone over here. ICMC says, yes, all of the East Coast has been getting the worst kind of weather I've seen in a long time, which is why I don't ever want to move to that area. You've just got to watch the news to see flooding in, in Africa and in India, all over the world. Think the, the weather is changing and it's not changing for the, for the better, it's changing for the worse. It's getting much, much worse. So, if you're paying attention, you can see it coming. Everywhere is the weather is changing and yeah, and it's getting getting deadly, deadly, deadly weather.
And Andrew Loss says, yeah, every year we have a major hurricane that sweeps across the southeast coast. It uh, get, gets worse each year. And Euro says, we get the tail ends of your hurricanes. Uh, Euro says, wind is a daily part of life here, which isn't a bad thing, free energy. No. Sniper Echo says, yeah, true, but it will need to, but it will need to do absolutely massive damage to hit the pockets of large corporates before anything will change. Well, you're probably true, and even if it did, you'd still probably get um, those energy people talking to politicians to try and make sure nothing does ever change. That's what I don't get about it all. I just don't, I don't understand politicians' attitude because it ha it's going to affect them and their families and their lives as well. It's not like they've got, they can escape the planet and it's not going to affect them. You know, it affects them as badly as us. So, I don't know, they're just sticking their heads in the sand is never a good idea for anyone. Okay, I might just increase this brush size a little bit. And I'm just going to hit the column here and there just to, to damage it up a little bit more. Because the edges are fine, but I, I want a little bit more damage happening as well through the center of the column. Uh, you know, the top of the column here, the middle. Not everywhere, just here and there. Change our brush size a little bit. Make it a little bit bigger up here. My apologies for the door slam. It is getting quite windy here today, I think. We're not going to see the top of the column. I'm just lightly hitting it here and there. Just so we get a little bit more and less wear and tear in the gold. talking about him. Oh, Sniper says, sorry, Sniper Girl says, uh, for gold, are you looking at layering another dark layer on top of and mask it off to crevice and to simulate older look? Yeah, I am. I'm actually going to be using this layer on top. And we're going to paint out some of it. So this is just the initial uh, layer that I'm using here to distress the gold. Then I'm going to layer down this layer on top of it and I'm going to paint out some of it so some of the gold is brighter than the rest of it. So we've got some duller parts of gold as well. I just have it turned off for the moment so that we can see what we're doing. Let's just do a save for this project. 
But that is my idea. I... Um, yeah, so I'm not go I'm just going to jump back into Max so I can check the top of the column. I'm pretty sure it butts up against something else anyway. Jump out of isolation mode. Jump out of isolation mode. Come on, Max. Just give it a minute, there we go. Uh, it's just slowing down a little bit because I have um, Substance Painter there going. So yeah, the top of the column butts up against the, the decorative piece here, so um, actually it does stick out a little bit. So I'm, I'm going to probably have to distress that edge as well. Forgot about that. It does stick out. It will require distressing the top edge as well. But I think we might leave it there for today, guys and girls. We'll save our project and we can pick it up tomorrow. I only have to do two, two versions of this texture. So I'm not doing every column individually, we're just going to reuse the same texture after I've made two versions of it. Uh, so tomorrow we will pick up where we left off here today and we'll distress the top of the co of the uh, gold bit here and add a bit of variation to the gold colour. Um, but I do want to thank you guys and girls for being here and watching, uh, remembering that I'm a streamer after my Easter break. So thanks again, guys and girls, for watching, being here. Um, you guys and girls have a great night, great day, whatever time it is, wherever you are. We'll pick this up again tomorrow, and uh, hopefully I'll see you guys and girls then. See you guys.